This video is presented to you by Physics for Students. To know more, please visit us at physicsforstudents.com. Welcome to my channel Physics for Students. My name is Shonak and I welcome you to this fifth episode in this Maxwell's Equation series where we are going to deal about enclosed charge and permittivity. Well, uh, before we go ahead and start with uh, the video, what I would like to go uh, take a step back and uh, learn something about what is called uh, this one, closed and open surface. Now, what I would like request all the viewers to watch that vid this video till the end because there are certain concepts which I'm going to explain, which is generally not uh, done on a very, uh, I would say, detailed manner. But this is important. Why? Because this carries a lot of significance well this subject the closed and open surface has its root in topology however we are not going to keep uh, go to topology and we are going to keep it up to the level of electromagnetism and the subject demands okay so this a closed surface is a surface that is compact and without bound boundary and a surface that has no bounding curve so now what I'm trying to tell you is that say for example a surface is a two-dimensional manifold right now some surfaces arises as the boundary of three-dimensional solids for example the sphere is the boundary of the solid ball okay other surfaces arise as graphs of functions now a closed surface is a surface that is compact and without boundary as I have shown in this definition a closed surface is one that does not go on forever and ever but also doesn't have edges okay so it just loops around you can say around uh, just like a sphere or a torus so it just goes on and loops around but it doesn't go on forever but it doesn't also have edges so what I'm trying to tell you is this it is though a strictly a topological definition but this is what is a closed surface looks like and this is what uh, I would like to explain about closed surface Contrary to that, an open surface is something which has an edge or a rim or some kind of a boundary. So mathematically, an open surface is bounded by an edge. So you can see here, this figure has got this red area. This is a kind of a bowl or a cup which has got a, a you know, a, a rim, a red area and this on also. So this is something which is important because in Gauss's law, we deal often with closed surfaces although not much of open surface so it is better to understand what is a closed and open surface now further going ahead what I would like to explain is this what is a Gaussian surface okay so Gaussian surface is basically a closed surface so just let us have a look this would help us to understand things better so what is the uh, definition of a Gaussian surface this is a Gaussian surface so it is any closed surface which is used to calculate the flow of any fluid or field electric or magnetic field right entering or leaving a source located inside or outside the surface so here is the definition is a closed surface in a three-dimensional space through which the magnetic flux of any type of a vector field and be clouded it can be anything electric gravitational or magnetic field so these are some of the examples this is uh, called a Gaussian sphere it's a Gaussian cylinder now here you might have a question that why does not Gauss's law consider char charges outside the Gaussian surface right so Gauss's law considered charge both inside and outside the Gaussian surface it is just that the field lines from charges outside the Gaussian surface cancels to zero because those field lines both enter and exit the surface right so it enters the surface it exits the surface this produces equal and opposite flux right and only uh, only charge from inside the surface can produce a non-zero flux since people uh, now know this conclusion ahead of time it is people that do not consider external charges while applying Gauss's law so let us go ahead and add some external charges and solve Gauss's law we will get the same answer as if those of external charges I'm sorry yeah uh, which were not there at all so the question that is that that why doesn't Gauss's law consider charges inside it considers both inside and outside but if it is just the field lines from the charges outside so it produces equal flux with opposite signs so only charges from inside the surface 
can produce a non-zero flux while outside it gets cancelled out okay so what is a gaussian surface these are the gaussian surfaces as uh, you can see it here and this is the reason that why the charge from inside surface can produce a non-zero flux what are the non-gaussian surface you have already seen these are actually the non-gaussian surface those which have an edge or a rim around so that is the reason i just thought to go a step back and explain to you what is a gaussian surface now there are certain properties which a gaussian surface has these are the properties i'm not going to explain further you can just take a note pause the screen and look into it it should be closed the surface must to the point where electric field is calculated surface must have a shape according to the symmetry and for a system of charges the gaussian surface should not pass through any discrete charge few important properties of gaussian surface okay so there are certain things uh, that which is called an appropriate Gaussian surface. Uh, remember, if a point charge is on a Gaussian surface, the question is that is it inside, outside, half and a half? So we generally try to avoid using Gauss's law on problems where discrete point charges lie on a Gaussian surface. So, so here it is, right? So sphere, if the charge distribution is symmetric, Cylindrical, if the charge distribution is cylindrically symmetric, here are two examples which shows that the charges, uh, these cylinders are non-symmetrical. This is a military pillbox, so we have got a Gaussian pillbox. So pillbox, if the charge distribution has transition, translation and symmetry, so used for calculate. Now, this is something important. Now, what is interesting about Gaussian surface is that they are only useful when some kind of a symmetry exists okay so gaussian cylinders as i have shown are helpful in two simple scenarios infinite sheet of charge or number two line of charge in go like gaussian surface on the other hand are useful when you have a spherical symmetry so gaussian surface let us understand are really just tools to facilitate calculations and elucidate the presence of symmetry so either it is this pill box or it is this one this is basically tools to facilitate and elucidate the presence of symmetry and these are the two important things when we consider the gaussian pillbox okay now we come across what is called an enclosed charge now the question is that how to determine charge on an enclosed surface now uh, let us understand what is an enclosed charge now you understand that is why now for example this is a point charge this is this has got multiple charges and this has got this is a kind of a cylinder right so you understand why the right side of the Gauss's law in, involved on the enclosed charge that is a charge within the closed surface for which the flux can be determined now as you can see in this figure these are point charges that means uh, you can say it is a kind of a you know can ad add those charges right these are discrete charges which you can use uh, calculate this formula uh, it, this is the total enclosed charge so you can just add up the individual charges and you can get the total charge however in physics and in other areas of study of the model okay so first let us see this one this is the linear charge density which is the lambda this is the sigma which calculates the area charge and rho calculates the volume charge so now if we get a kind of an enclosed length which is l we just multiply it uh, for enclosed area we multiply it with sigma and for enclosed volume we calculate um, we multiply it with rho so length area volume we are just multiplying it with the linear area and volume provided that yes if it is constant over length area and volume so this is something which is for the calculation of the linear part however in, in physics and in other areas uh, as the model emerges it becomes more complex so you cannot really count one two three number of charges so what we do is this right so we use the integration in case that it is not constant or we get a curvilinear kind of a coordinates so this gets into this so the enclosed area this is also calculated and this one is calculated so what we are doing is that and this is the enclosed charge in Gauss's law that is the total charge so just let us go back in this case the quantities are constant and it, this is just not a case of multiplication what we are doing if you go back to my video you will see these are the surface integrals that we are calculating 
so the integration techniques are you know for surface integrals and this is the enclosed charge in Gauss's law is basically what we are calling of the total charge so this actually covers what is named by enclosed charge in case if it is a linear how do you calculate and non-linear we use the uh, surface integrals okay now we come to the final part which is called permittivity and permeability although the second part is not important in this context but however it is always worth reading now for example I will just give you a simple example so for example you are told to swim in an extremely dense liquid and then you are given a choice to swim in water a dense liquid versus a water so which one will you select simple you would say water right instead of the dense liquid and is it it is more easy to swim so some way space is more appropriate in some mediums and less than some with respect to allowing the uh, field or the electric field lines to pass through it as a result we can conclude that it is a number which permittivity is a number which describes the ability of medium to allow electric lines to force through it so permittivity actually comes from the word permit so the constant of proportionality now let us see the con this one this constant of proportionality between the electric flux on the left hand side of Gauss's law and the enclosed charge on the right hand side this one is the permittivity of free space so it gives the permission a permittivity of a material actually depends uh, its response to an applied electric field we will soon see that so permittivity measures the amount of electric field that any material uh, allows to cross it right so in electromagnetism uh, the permit uh, this is this is the measure of electric polarization this is this by um, uh, epsilon uh, the zero this is actually the measure of permittivity and this is the uh, more or less a uh, kind of a you can ca call it uh, the measure of it and this is also in farad per farad per meter this is what the values and what is the definition of permittivity now permeability actually is the ability of a material to support the formation of a magnetic field this is the support of a material formation of a magnetic field which is denoted by the mu sign and it was called by Oliver Heaviside around September 1885 and the permittivity is denoted by this which B is the magnetic field and this is the measure so right in front of you are the two uh, important uh, terms the permittivity which is the amount that allows to flow and permittivity is the ability of a material to support the formation of then electric field uh, sorry the magnetic field okay so far so good now this is something which we called uh, we we are discussing about the constant of proportionality between the electric flux on the left and the Gauss's law etc the question it arises is that does this mean that the uh, form of Gauss's law is only valid in vacuum no Gauss's law is written in this uh, in general and it applies to electric fields within dielectrics as a result. okay fine F first let us see what is a dielectric okay so this is something having the property of transmitting electric that means it forms a kind of an insulation right so okay so this is something it is called a dielectric plate separation and it reduces the amplitude of an electric field so the effect of bound charges can be understood by considering what happens when a dielectric plate is placed in an external field so you saw the meaning of dielectric field so you understand it's a very poor conductor of electric field now here is another picture this is where no dielectric is present so the lines are moving through and this is something where dielectric becomes polarized right when placed in an electric field which means that the positive and negative charges getting are displayed so this is the induced field this is the dielectric yes so what happens is that the positive and negative charges are displaced from their original positions and since positive charges are displayed in one direction which you can see parallel to the applied electric field and negative charges are displaced in the opposite direction which you can see in the anti-parallel to the applied field these displayed charges give rise to their own electric field that opposes an electric field this is which is shown so this makes the net field within the dielectric less than the external field so just to give you this is this is something which is uh, called the bound charges and it is important that dielectric to reduce the amplitude of an electric field 
okay so now this is something i just wanted to give you this is called relative permittivity introduced by kappa which is a dielectric constant and this is the permittivity of the substance that means which substance which al will allow what kind of material to fold follow through so permittivity of salts salt i have given this one for other substances we have different and this is the permittivity of vacuum which is given by this number which is farad per meter right so this gives you an idea what is permittivity and uh, and the and the numbers of how to calculate here is a quick overview on the difference between permittivity and permeability this is something uh, the which measures the obstruction and of an electric field during polarization this measures the ability of the material to allow the magnetic field force to pass this is related to electric field permeability is related to magnetic field this is high permittivity means it is used for dielectric materials in capacitors that means it is a bad it is not allowing high permeability is used for transformer cores the free space the values of this and this and it is denoted by epsilon this is denoted by mu right so i i know you might be thinking that why i am showing you the difference but in case again you come across permeability so this is a good point and good time to understand each other so this is what we have done right we have uh, shown this uh, this is something this is the total amount of charge divided by permittivity of free space this is the right hand side of gauss's law in the integral form so this one again to repeat electric charge produces an electric field and the flux of the field passing through any closed surface is proportional to the total charge contained within that surface the left hand side is the integral form which we have dealt earlier and the right hand side is the total amount of charge and we have understood what is permittivity of free space so just to summarize what we have learned we have learned closed and open surface we have also learned what is a gaussian surface and what are the properties of gaussian surface we also learned what is an enclosed charge and what is permittivity and permeability so this summarizes the uh, video topic of today what is permittivity and permeability going back and learning few things so in the next video we are going to cover up the differential form of gauss's law and i'm going to show you as usual the different components and how it is used do let me know how do you like the video please put up your comment in any section you want me to improve or any section you want to learn more or if you are unable to understand i would love to answer your question please do like my video subscribe to the channel and do let me know your comment in the comment box stay safe stay happy and goodbye